destroy or consume. But I thank God that God's mercy is renewed each and every one. So we're trying to encourage the believers to hold on. Hold on to your faith and don't let no man steal your crown. Don't get weary in well-doing. Then Isaiah said this in the 29th verse of our 40th chapter. God will give power to the faint, to those that are about to faint. Sometimes when you're overexerting yourself, you're doing too much, you have too many things on your plate. You're like a juggler trying to juggle a bunch of balls. And you're concerned about one of the balls going to drop. And when one ball drops, you try to catch it and all of the balls mm -hmm. fall to the ground. But God will give you give power to those that are in a fainting position, beloved. Sometimes when you're out there like well, walking or jogging, sometimes you feel like you're about to faint. You're about to fall out. <laughs> Why are you standing? Because there's, there's so much power, so much energy has been given to what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe the sun is beaming down on you very hard. Maybe you're going through trials and tribulations and you just don't see no way out. You don't see how God can fix the situation. But the eyes of say, God will give power to those that are in a fainting position. He'll give you that, that, that smell of sauce to wake you back up, to encourage your heart, to give you more grace, to give you more strength, so that you can go a little bit further. And not only will God give power, I'm talking about Holy Ghost power, that dunamis power, that quickening power, that saving power, that loosening power. Not only will he give power to those that are in a position of fainting, giving up, you know, when you're about to faint, sometimes you black out. Sometimes you don't even know you're about to hit the floor until you hit the floor. But I thank God that God is right there to pick you up. And not only do he give power to the faint and to them that have no might, you just don't so feel like I, can, I can't go no further. Mm -hmm. He increased your strength. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone on last evening that said they weary in their soul. It's a, thing, it's, it's a sad thing when your soul gets weary. Now I'm tired to go. I'm, I'm, I'm ready and I'm tired. I'm, 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 it's time to go home because I'm weary in my soul. But God can give strength to those that are weary in their souls and those that don't have no might. God said he will increase your strength. Yes, sir. You know, God said he will supply. The Bible says that God said he will supply your every need. If you need more strength, the Bible said, go far. The songwriter said, go far enough to get joy. Because the joy of the Lord, that's your strength, beloved. And the more joy you have in God, the more you rejoice and rejoice in the God of your salvation, the more strength you will receive. Because as praises go up, beloved, deliverance come down. The songwriter said, hallelujah, anyhow, I'm not going to let my troubles get me down. When life troubles come my way, and they will come, because man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble, God will supply your need. He'll supply your every need according to his riches and glory. And that joy that God gives us, beloved, I'm not talking about happiness, because when the thing is taken out of your way, you won't be happy no more. But God can give you everlasting joy, rivers of joy, swinging, springing up into everlasting life. You have to go far enough to get joy, beloved, because the joy of the Lord, that's your strength. And that's what God will supply. He will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. Isaiah the 30 verse, it says, even the youth shall faint. And we're living in a time where you, young people are falling out of the ranks. They're committing suicide because they don't see no hope for tomorrow. But as they say, even the youth will faint and be weary. Yes. And the young men shall utterly fall. But God has given us a remedy for those who are fainting and, and ready to fall. This is what you have to learn, learn to lean on, but beloved. Because it's talking about young people now. Talking about people that have strength. Because he called the young because they're strong. Mm -hmm. And he called the old because they know the way. But even the young people in the time that we're living in are, are fainting, committing suicide, having an identity crisis, don't know who they are, don't know whose they are. And they're giving up because they see no hope for tomorrow. 
So we learn even in the midst of that, whether you're young or whether you're old, never to lean on the arms of flesh. Because the arms of flesh will fail you. But I got news for you, for you beloved. Jesus has never failed. Jesus never leaned on man, for he knew what was in man. He only trusted in God. The psalmist said in 121 and 1, I lift the eyes to the hills from which my help comes from. I know that my help comes from the Lord because when I'm fainting, I'm about to fall out. When I'm about to fall and when I'm weary, God has strengthened me even in the midst of my fainting. He'll give me some Holy Ghost smelling sauce to wake me back up to say, get up from here. Even in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was, was going to pray before he was taken captive by the enemy, he asked the disciples a question. You stay here. Talking about young men. John was young. Mm -hmm. And if that was his inner circle. Peter, James, and John. Judas had already gone to betray him. He said, watch with me just one hour. Mm -hmm. And he went about a stone cast away. And the Bible says he prayed to his father. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and he began to pray. And he prayed until sweat came down like great drops of blood that this bitter cup of drag would pass from him, that he wouldn't have to go to Calvary and die for our sins. But I thank God the Bible said that he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He said, no, I come in the Bible of a book. It is written to me to do thy will, O oh God. I always do the things that are pleasing to my Father. He prayed, beloved, until sweat came down like great drops of blood. Yes, he went back to his disciples and found them to sleep. And he said, couldn't you just wait, pray with me just one hour? And he went away. That's why I'm saying you can't lean on your, on your usual strength. No, you but you have to look to the hills for what's coming to your help. In Isaiah the 31st chapter, he says, But they that wait upon the Lord, you have to wait on God, beloved. Job, the songwriter said, Job waited on the Lord. Why can't I? Mm -hmm. Didn't you know he's a burden bearer? Didn't you know that he's a heavy load sheriff? Didn't you know? Didn't you know? Didn't you know? Didn't you know that he's never been late? And all you have to do is just learn how to wait. And the people we all the time used to say, He may not come. Mm -hmm. when you want him to. But he's always on time because he's an all-time God. And God will never place no more on you, beloved. I don't care where your position is today. Whether you're in a fainting position or whether you're in a weary position. God will never put no more on us than we can bear. And the Lord has already made a way of escape. But we yes. have to do what Isaiah say, said. What? But bear that way. Oh. On the Lord. I'm waiting on Jesus. Yeah. He shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. That fainting strength. That weary strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. They shall run. And not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Lord help me to wait on you. Help me to trust you. Help me to put my trust in God because in God is my strength. He's my secure. For in Him I live, I move, and I have my being. And without Him I can't do nothing. We must trust God's will that He will strengthen us. If we have the patience, the trust in our souls to wait on Him. For He may not come when you want Him in your time of trouble. I know what the Job said in the sixth trouble. That God will come, and in the seventh trouble, no evil shall befall me, beloved. He's always on time. God will strengthen those that trust and are willing to wait on him. Wait on the manifestation power of God. In Galatians 6 and 9, it said, let us not be weary in well-doing. We're doing well, so why get weary? You're doing good to all men, even to the household of faith. And there's a due season in your life, beloved. There's, there's winter, spring, summer, and fall. And all you have to do is call. And God will come through, beloved, when you need Him the most. There's a due season in your life where you're going to reap the benefits 
of the good that you have done. I remember my um, spiritual father, Bishop James Moore, when he used to come to Ridge Avenue, in 2027 Ridge Avenue, and preach the shallow church of Christ, the shallow holy church of Christ's disciples. He would preach the Ecclesiastics, the 11th chapter, I believe, saying, Cast your bread upon the water, and it shall return after many days, beloved. You have to cast your bread upon the water. So you're going to reap if you faint not. The psalmist cried out to not fret yourself because of evil doers, because of the workers of iniquity, because they're not going to prosper but for so long. And that time is short. But we have to have the patience of Job, beloved. It's Luke 21 and 19. Because in your patience, in my patience, Patience is waiting and trusting in the God that delivered you. And your patience possess your soul. And patience, beloved, is the virtue that few people possess. Don't have time. We don't have time for nothing. It's a quick fix society that we're living in. We want it quick, fast, and in a hurry. We want to get saved quick, fast, in a hurry. Here's saving. In a, in a moment, in a second of time, in the twinkling of an eye. But, beloved, you have to work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling. You don't get a job one day, unless it's a job that pays you every day. And what pay you have to work. And sometimes they hold back a week. But you have to work out your own soul salvation. You have to have patience to wait for that paycheck. And But this is what happens. Because we don't have patience, those, those, those who are not financially secure, before they even get paid, their paycheck is spent. Before they even got paid, because they don't have the patience to wait to Friday or whatever day you may get paid on. And a lot of times we don't have patience to wait on God. I said we begin to hit God with his own word. You said you would take care of my problems. Yeah, God, but God said wait on me. Wait on me. Sometimes the, the, never, the problem is never God. The issue is always with us. We have to get to the place where God can bless us, beloveds. Because God's blessing will overtake you, beloveds, if you be in the place that you're supposed to be in. 2 Timothy 2 and 3 says, Thou therefore, we have to endure. This is what patience does, beloved. It helps you to endure hardness. As a good soldier, it didn't say softness, it said hardness. The kingdom of God is preached, heaven is preached, and men press their way in the kingdom of God. And the violence takes it by force. We are soldiers in the army of God. You have to endure hardness. You have to do the, endure the hard times. You have to do the, and you can easily endure the good times, but what about when things get hard? I remember when the Jesus gave the disciples that cast out, they were working miracles, about 70 of them. And they came back rejoicing that the demons, the devils were subject to them in Jesus' name. Jesus told them, don't rejoice that, that the devils are subject to you in my name, but rejoice rather that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what the rejoicing is supposed to be about. Then when he talked about it in that seventh chapter, I believe of St. John, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. Mm -hmm. What did they say? They said it was a hard saying. Who can hear it? And they walked with him no more because they wasn't willing to endure hardness as a good soldier. They wasn't willing to do what the twelve apostles did when they didn't understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. They got with Christ separately and said, reveal unto us this parable. And Jesus said, unto you, it is, it is, it is, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who don't have no patience, those that's not willing to wait on me, those that are not willing to serve me, it's not revealed unto them. So we ought to endure hardness. Talking about endurance, beloved. People don't want to endure nothing. Back in the day, Long time ago, I say, you know, in order to build your physique, to build muscles, you went to the gym every day, and you did what you had to do. You paid who were willing to pay the price, but then they got the good idea, the, the, the great idea, let 
they used steroids to buff me up. They wasn't willing to go through the process of enduring hardness as a good soldier. Because in your patience possess be your soul. This is a way, beloved, that the, the vulture eyes have not seen. This is a straight and narrow way. And only a few are going to find it. But in order to find this straight and narrow way, you have to endure hardness as a good soldier. They talk about becoming a millionaire. If it was easy to become a millionaire or a billionaire, everybody would be doing it. But we take shortcuts, we play numbers, we gamble, we go to the casino trying to make it rich. And don't you know that a fool and his money will soon depart? If you're a fool before you got money, you're going to still be a fool when you get money. And the Bible says, he that trusts in riches, the riches is going to fly away. They're going to take wings and fly away from you. But we are soldiers in God's arm and we must follow Christ's example. Just as Christ Jesus has suffered in the flesh. We must. It's not a, it's not a suggestion. <laughs> but we must arm ourselves likewise. With the same mind. Because he that suffers in the flesh, we love us. You cease from sin. You want to learn to put your trust and confidence in God. You want to be like Job. Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. We must put on the whole arm of God. And we have soldiers today that's in the Christian army. They're not fully equipped. They don't have the whole arm of salvation. They don't have the shield of faith. They don't have the helmet of salvation. They're supposed to be in this military. And they're half, half naked. They don't have the sword of the spirit. They don't have their lungs girt the Bible of the truth. They don't have the fresh bread of righteousness. They don't have their feet shot with the preparation of God for the free peace. Pray for all men. Don't have that whole harm on. But you expect to, to defeat the enemy. Wow. Not properly trained. Not willing to go through basic training. Not willing to go through AIT, advanced infantry training. Not willing to do what you're supposed to do. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we ought to fight the good fight of faith, beloved. It's, it's a fight that we're in. There's no fly with better ease. So we're here to encourage you to not be weary, to not give up, to hold on to the horns of the altar. It's praying time. There's no time to give up. Jesus is soon to come. Don't let no man steal your crown. You started off good. But Paul said in the third chapter of Galatians, Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth of God's word? Did the law save you or did grace save you? Let no man steal the crown. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight for your family. Fight for their life. Lay hold to eternal life. Where to you are called according to 1 Timothy 6 and 12. You have been called for many are called. But few are chosen. And if you put your hand to the gospel plow and look back, the Bible says you're not fit for the kingdom. So don't get weary. And well doing. And you profess a good profession before many witnesses. And the devil is right there, the brother, the devil is right there, the accuser of the brethren, to present his case to God, just like he did with Job, saying that he only served because you blessing him. <laughs> Take away the blessings, and I guarantee you he'll curse you to your faith. But God testified of Job. And I believe God is testifying for us today, beloved, right. that they don't serve me just for the fishes and the loaves. They serve me because they love me. Mm -hmm. Just like I love them unconditionally, they love me for what I've done for them. Ha ha. Set my son to die for them. To die for the sins of the world. So don't be weary. Yeah, because the devil is the accuser of the brother, accusing yes. us before God. Yes. Saying that we only serve because he continued. God continue to bless us with material blessings. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, as riches increase, don't set your heart upon them. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God desires that we prosper and that we be in good health, even as our soul prospers. Yeah. It's God's good pleasure to give us of his kingdom. Yeah. But we have to first seek ye first. 
first things first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto us, beloved. Take away the riches. I'd rather have Jesus in silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus because he's the one that set my soul free. Pulled me up out of muck and mire clay. He planted my foot feet upon a rock to stand. That one, that is the reason I sing and I shout. Because he lifted me up out of that mire clay. He lifted me up when I couldn't get up on my own. You used to have that commercial, help, I fell down. I fall down. We need help. And I can't get up. But Jesus, he reached down his hand and he pulled me up out of muck and mire clay. Pull me up out of that quicksand. Snatch my soul from the gates of hell. Jesus did. So don't be weary and well done. We want to endure hardness, beloved, as good soldiers. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Look high the royal banner and must not suffer loss. Jeremiah 12 and 5 said, If thou run with the footmen, yeah, and they weary thee. Those, those that are marching in cadence. Then how can thou contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trusted, they weary thee. <laughs> then how? How? Ask, my, ask me this question. What I do in the swallowing of Jordan? You haven't seen nothing yet. My God, my God. That means this, beloved, that Paul said that these are light afflictions Ooh, yes, he said. and the suffering of this world are nothing to be compared that to the glory that shall be revealed in us, beloved. You haven't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. That means these are light afflictions. Mm, yes, it does. You don't see here Christians in the United States getting their head cut off. Being killed because they refuse to denounce Christ. None of this is going on in the land of peace. But you're weary. You're tired. You're depressed. You're discouraged. I'm discouraged that I don't have a light. Get a back and light a candle. And just remember that Jesus is the light of the world. The psalmist said, I was young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor the seed begging rest. Stop making excuses. For your weariness and for your faintness. Stop making excuses. Excuses. Excuses are all nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus was hung up for our hang up and by him strength we are healed. These are light afflictions. And if you can't stand these trials, these small trials that we're going through, I have cancer. Not me. <laughs> Not that I know of. Somebody, yeah. But somebody may have cancer and going through hard times. I might have family members with cancer. My wife dealt with it. And you know one thing? When she had cancer, she never complained. And she trusted in God. And God worked the miracle and got that, that big C out of her life. That cancer out of her life. But she didn't give up hope. Because God, you said... I was healed. I was wounded. You was wounded for my transgression. And by your faith, I was healed. Why I got cancer? I'm healed from sin and degradation. My soul has been healed. My spirit has been healed. My flesh is going back where it came from. In my mind, I serve the Lord, but in my flesh, I serve sin. And this is going back. Back to the dust from which it came. Job said, after the skin worms had eaten my body, my flesh, yet in my Ooh, flesh, on, my glorified body, I shall see God and not for another, mm -hmm. but for myself. Mm -hmm. These are like afflictions. I don't care your bills are overdue. The mortgage is due. You love your husband left you, your wife left you, your children turned their back on you. It's nothing compared to how Jesus suffered for us. How he was taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. How they spat in his face. The Bible says he did no sin. And neither was any gall found in his mouth. They knocked him outside his head. They blindfolded him and smacked him and said, prophesy. Who hit you? He knew who hit him. They planted 72 
thorns and made a crown and planted on his tender brow. You never went through that. I never went through that. We've been pricked, but not like that. But if you can't stand these things, how can you stand being crucified? Christ is our example. They nailed his hands, they nailed his feet to a rugged cross. Yes. On Calvary Mountain, the hill of the skull, down outside of the city of Jerusalem, for your sins and for my sins. Beloved, we haven't seen nothing yet. These are nothing but light afflictions. But in every situation, God has already made for us a way of escape. But we must trust in the sovereignty of God. Hallelujah! God is sovereign. He rules and he super rules. Mm -hmm. This kingdom that we preach, it's going to suffer violence because the devil don't want souls to be saved. And we have to take it by force. So we must press for the prize of the higher calling. It's a higher calling, beloved. That's in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Somebody might have told you once you get saved, your trouble will be over. But that's a lie. Once you get saved, your trouble has only begun. Because the devil will try to do everything to stop you from getting into heaven. He don't want you to go there. That's why the Bible says he came down with great woe. Because he knows his time is short. Yes. With great wrath. Mm -hmm. Because he knows his time is short. Yes. And he don't want you and I to make it into heaven. Yes. So we have to arm ourselves. Yes. But I'm so glad we may be in trouble, but we're not in despair. Yes, we may be cast down, but we will not be forsaken by God. All right, all right, all right. Yes. So we arm ourselves like God. With the same mind. Mm -hmm. My heart is fixed. Yes, sir. And my mind is made up. Mm -hmm. Joshua said, As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You can even serve the God in Egypt that had you in bondage, mm -hmm. the God of drugs, the God of, of, of sexual deviation. You can serve them gods. Or you can serve the God in the land who God has blessed you to conquer. Yes, sir. But he said, as for me and mine, we're going to serve the Lord. Why should I serve someone that's on a losing team? Hallelujah! My God in heaven. Hallelujah! Why should I serve a God who can't beat God Jehovah? Hallelujah! Why should I serve a God who can't beat God Elohim? Why could I, should I serve a God who cannot conquer Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider? Why should I serve a God Aya! that cannot defeat God alone, the God of my peace? Why should I serve any other gods? I'm not going to serve the God of the air, the God of the water, the God of the fish. I'm going to serve Jehovah. Aya! The God of the universe, the God who created me, the God who created you. Uh -huh. For Jesus suffered many things for, for our sake, beloved. And we have to do suffering the same things so that we can cease from sin. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3 said, Let no man deceive you by any means. That the day that we're talking about, the, talking about the day, it's not going to come. We're talking about the second coming of Christ. Except there'll be a falling away first. Mm -hmm. My late pastor, Pastor Gertrude Dickerson, she said that that prophecy doesn't have to be fulfilled on you. Yeah, and that yeah, the man yeah. of sin, sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Hallelujah! So we were warned of this prophecy years ago. And another thing my pastor, my late pastor preached when I first got saved, she said, see Jesus. I don't know whether she preached it or whether she taught it, but it got so much down in my spirit that I never forgot it. In other words, don't look at man because the arms of flesh will fill you. Your pastor sometimes, they'll fill you because they're human. So she said, look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. And if, and if God didn't allow me to hold on to that word that she preached or That's taught right. years ago, I would have been gave up. Yes, Lord. Because you had people who came in just to fleece the, the body of Christ. 
people that really they had the title but they didn't have the influence. Oh, yeah. See ya. They didn't have that knowing that destroys every year. Talk about church folks. They would have discouraged you. They would have crushed you, especially as a babe, giving you meat instead of milk and you busy choking. I remember the other day my little my granddaughter Logan, she was eating some um, spirit ribs that someone gave to me. It was very real hard. She liked it. But because it was real hard, she almost choked on me. And I looked at her and I knew because I'm a retired fireman and parent EMT, you know, that I couldn't do the harm for her because she was still able to cough and breathe until eventually that I got out of her. But I thought about that when I thought about you trying to give a child meat when they really should be drinking milk. But she was old enough to eat meat. Yeah. But I'm trying to do the show you the comparison. Sure, sure. And a lot of times that baby Christian we give them meat when we should be giving them milk. Not meat. So we are warned by this prophecy. There's gonna be a great fall away. The songwriter said so many, so many are falling by the wayside. Lord, please help me to stand. The preachers are falling by the wayside. The deacons are falling by the wayside. The pastors are falling by the wayside. Lord, please. Help me to stand. The Bible, Paul said this, when those who think they're strong, take heed. Lest you fall. Sometimes we get our head get big and we think that we don't need to do what we used to do. But the Bible tells us in Sardis, the third chapter of Revelation, you know, you have to do your first works over again. You have to always stand in mind of repentance and prayer and consecration, getting close to God. So that that prophecy don't be fulfilled in your life. And we must hold on to God's unchanging hand. You know, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. People change. Mm -hmm. Society change. Mm -hmm. Generation mm -hmm. change. But God never changed. You say, well, God, He's the same today, yesterday, forevermore. But, but this is what He does, beloved. And we think it's a change. Mm -hmm. But it's the manifold wisdom of yes. God. Hallelujah. He rebuilds, manifold, he reveals us up to us as we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Jesus, Savior Jesus Christ. It's not that he changed, but he opened our eyes so that we could see. My prayer all the time, Lord, is don't let me be oblivious to the things that's going on around me. Don't let me be oblivious to my life and what I'm supposed to be doing in this station of my life. The sun's of Issachar, they understood the times and knew what to do in them. Oh, yes. Lord, don't let me be oblivious to what's going on in your grace and your mercy. Just like the disciples, and we're just about done. They rebuked those who were calling on Jesus, call, casting out devils in the name of Jesus. Yes. But they wasn't following Jesus. They were many John's disciples. And Jesus told them, don't forbid them. Yes, right. See, they, their understanding was dark because if they uh, against it, they must be forced. Jesus, I have other sheep that you know not of. You don't know everything. Lord, don't let me be oblivious to your grace, to your mercy, to your to your power. He said, then also, hallelujah, I must pray. I know he was talking about the Gentiles. Matthew 24 and 13 said, but he that endured to the end. It's a race of enduring. The race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but to him that endures to the end. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, higher, then all you might be saved indeed. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you yes, free. Sir. Yes, sir. When, we are, when we fail to understand the will of God, we can grow weary and faint in our walk with Christ. When you don't understand God's will, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. So we just thank God for his word today. May his word find a resting place in your heart. Kaya! May we be doers of his word and not just hear the talk as only. This is my closing statement, dear Lord, as we close. In Ecclesiastes 9 11, 
we quoted it, but it said, I returned, Solomon. He said, I returned. And I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither bread, neither yet bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. So endure hardness, beloved, as a good soldier. Don't make excuses for why you can't do. But begin to trust in a God who can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. So let us bow our hearts in the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word does the upright good in the heart. And we pray, God, that while we're in this race, that we continue to press for the prize of the higher calling. That's in Christ Jesus. Because I want to receive my crown, my crown of life, my incorruptible crown, my crown of glory, my crown of righteousness. I want to receive my crown, Lord. And I want stars in my crown. Stars that spent representing the souls that was won to the kingdom through the ministry that you have granted unto us. Higher! Higher! Lord, we want that great reward. The reward said that you said, Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to reward every man. According to the works of the a reward that I have never seen and ears haven't heard, neither have it entered to the hearts of men. Higher! The thing that you have prepared for us, Lord. Lord, we want to be like Paul when he cried from the cells in New York, in Rome, from New being beheaded from Nero, chopping block. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And beloved, I want to keep the faith. He said, if we do that, there's laid up a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to every man at that day. You can't get it before. You can't outrun me, and I can't outrun you. So we must run lawfully this race. And not to me only, Paul said, but to all those that love his appearance. Hallelujah! Lord God, bless your word and bless those who hear your word today. For we ask it in Christ's name. Hallelujah. And for his grace we pray that the church say amen. amen. May the grace of God and sweet communion, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest Amen. and abide henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Let God's word present, let God's word be resonant in your heart and your soul and your mind. All we remember, beloved, that God loves you, we love you. There's nothing that no one can do about it. This is Bishop Anderson from New Shiloh Holy Hands Healing Ministries. Sam Shalom. God bless you.